Okay, we're ready to get started. It's about that time. Just to let you know, we're going to just to let you know we're going to be in chapter three of the Gospel of John. Chapter three of the Gospel of John. That's where we're going to pick up tonight. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with our prayer requests and praise reports, if you please. No, I'm going to start with Lori. Okay. <laughs> we will put Lori down. Yeah. Her usual. My chat, my books not even work. Let me do it. We all do prayers, always. Okay. All right. Uh, Ed, can we start with you, please? I hope my older daughter has better luck. Amen. She got diagnosed with the same thing Lori has got. Uh huh. And they think that they might have a cure for it now. Really? Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's lift her up. Can we use her name? Can we use her name? Your daughter's name? Oh, Tony. Tony? Okay. I? T-O-N-I? T-O-I-N. T-O-I-N. No, T-O-N-I. T-O-N-I. Her really name is Annie, but she decided... Her real name is Antoinette, but she decided... Antoinette, that's cool. Oh, that's a beautiful. I like Antoinette. I like the Antoinette. Well, so did I. That day I gave it to her. Yeah, there you are. Okay. All right, cool. We'll lift her up. And uh, anything else? No, that's it. All right, thank you, sir. All right. Um, um, that's Donna. That's Miss Donna. Donna. <laughs> oh my. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I was just drawing a blank. It's not that I don't know it. I just yeah, drew a blank. Was. Okay, that's all. I was that girl for six months. You're not old enough to have seen your mom. That's yet. right. Who are you? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, Miss Donna. Um, I'm doing great. I need rest. Amen. That's it. Okay. All right. Amen. All right, Brother Jack. Go oh, rest. Uh, my great granddaughter. She's. They're talking about she's going to have a baby tonight. Wow. Oh, what's your name? No, my granddaughter. I mean. Yeah. Uh, 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 Ferris, keep her on prayer list. Uh, Barbara Gibbs. Gibbs. And uh, they shown tonight where they baptizing a Dallas Cowboy in a swimming uh -huh. pool. Oh, wow. And they had it on. It was Channel 8. Channel 8. Good deal, good deal. Okay, can we back up a second? Have you heard anything else about Barbara Gibbs? Is she? I talked to her yesterday, okay. and she's beginning to do better. Uh, she, she's not as depressed as she was. Mm -hmm. Still lots of bruising. Uh, right hand is messed up. Right. Uh, she's got to go Friday for x-rays to see if there is anything broken. The first x-rays didn't show anything. Or wrist. Uh, yes. Uh, still no automobile. She has an attorney that's working on her case. Um, and Jim's home. I don't know how long he's going to be home, but anyway, um, she just she needs lots of prayers. Right, right, and that's the reason I want to go back to her. Right. She just had an auto accident last week. For those who don't know, is she and still working through all of this? No, no, she's not working right now. I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, sorry. Her, her situation at work is better. Initially, they were kind of threatening her with termination. All right. Mm -hmm. They were talking before they talked to HR, and so HR kind of straightened them out. So good. it's, it's good. better. Good okay. yeah. right. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, I just, no, no, no. Yeah. I just, okay, go back to forgetful. I mean, the one you couldn't remember. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. She's a Mrs. I want to Mrs. praise the Lord because he's got that head for that protection around me. Amen. And that's why that snake didn't get me. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Amen. I mean, he got me, but he didn't get me good. Right. Because the good Lord was there. It's protecting me, and, mm -hmm. and I know it was him. Because yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, I had my hand right down there, and he he should have nailed yeah. me. Right. A lot worse than what he did. Wow. So, Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's why I said the Lord's got that hedge of protection. Mm -hmm. You bet. I told that old yeah. snake to go on. There you are. I don't know if they put any more snakes anywhere. Until okay. the next time. <laughs> Did you find oh, yeah. the snake yet? Huh? You find it yet? No. Nope. No. It probably crawled off some place, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I tell you what he did do. He asked me to come over and sit in a chair right in the same building. Yeah, it was that. Not that far away. I, I kind of said, "Am I babe?" Or what? <laughs> right. 
That was before I got the snipe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? Um, I just want to keep President Trump on there because they're yeah. going after him again. Yep. With all this right. garbage. And, uh, you know, that's about it. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. All right, Brother Bill. It's time we start praying to remove those people from office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. they're up to no good. They're not going to be changed. Right. So, uh, I got three new girls we need to pray for. You didn't have enough on your plate? Right. <laughs> Jeez. So pray that God takes this mess off me so i got strength to keep on doing it. Right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to build up. I'm trying to get this silent joke everybody else is getting, but I'm going to it. Right. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, a couple down in uh, Palestine, I was asking, we need to pray that they get the handicap van that they need. And it just so happens the way God works. One of the ladies that I picked up this week, her mother works for the VA and her boss is for Palestine. So she said, I will get you some help. So there you go. Awesome. Yeah. Man, man. That's the way, way it works. Yep. What I was doing with the daughters. So. Cool. Yeah. Good deal, good deal. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Anything else? That's it. All right. Thank you, sir. Sister Kathy? Well, pray for myself, of course, and my daughter and my grandsons. I want to pray for the two Judys, Judy Watts and Judy Bradford. Judy Bradford's daughter, Angie, is very ill. She finally got out of the hospital, but she's got a lot of problems. So mm -hmm. I want to pray for her and Bill and his family, and that's it. Okay. All right, Brother Thomas? It's my name. All right. All right. Good deal, good deal. Sister? Thomas and I, um, my hip, I got yeah. shots today and my hip feels better. I bet. But I'm still not walking very good. So I think that's because I've been walking so bad for so long. <laughs> You're used yeah. to walking I bad. I kind of have to learn to walk good. <laughs> uh, Sam and Deb and Timothy and Patricia and praise the worship team and Lynn Hill and Unspoken. Okay. Thank you, sister. All right, Bernie, can we jump over here to you? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I have a couple of months spoken, and I just want to thank God for his mercy. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Slow down, please. All right. I was instructed to slow down. Okay. <laughs> so, Colleen. Okay, I'm going to for Vernon and the Wager family. Right. James Dyson, I talked to Judy today, and he went to the doctor, he got a shot in his knee, but if it's not better in three weeks, he's going to have to have surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donna Tatum, and I had Polly down, uh -huh. and uh, the church, and you, and Terry, and the Thanks. sick, the hungry, and the homeless, and the military, and the first responders. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't whoa, know whoa, whoa. To write this down, but y'all know it. And the leaders of our country, and most of all, the non believers. Amen. And what, is, what about Bobby? What about her? <laughs> 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 all I got was Don Tatum. That was where my mother stopped at. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, she's a lot better. Yeah. I thought, well, she was going to come tonight, but then she called me right before. I guess because the weather got nasty. Well, she was yeah, if his brother don't get get right out, yeah, I, I might move to Hawaii. I was with her today, so she's all right. Right, good deal. Good deal. All right, Brother Claude. One and four. Okay. And uh, keep me in prayer. Amen. We'll do. Okay. All right. Trying to wonder where this truck's going. It's out there. Yeah, I hear it. Well, it could be somebody that's coming late. Could well, be. I just need to pick out there and see. It's not like Don. Nice to hear it again. Guards going right all the way. That's good. Right back here. Mm -hmm. He's still moving. Bobby's stuck. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Um, my car is paid for. It's not good for me. It's just a continued prayer for my mom and dad. You know, my okay. mom's got dementia that we're battling. And right. lost mm -hmm. my husband. Okay. All right. How about you? I'm good. You sure? I'm all good. <laughs> he was fresh <part> mixing. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, my usual. Uh, I, I, I stand in agreement about the president and uh, government officials and everything from from the top all the way to the bottom. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, it just don't look good. It doesn't feel good either. Right. And uh, again, our church. Praise for that, but it's here for the people and the church being y'all. So. Right, right. And uh, prayers for you and Terry. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My usual includes all of my family right there. Yeah. Just in case you didn't. Yes. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm good with that now because I have to write. So much. Right. He says that his usual includes all of the families. Right, right. Yeah. And his wife and his. Okay. Let's just keep in prayer for our uh, rodeo ministry and our uh, fellowship hall. Right, baby. And that's, yeah. that's it on me. Yeah, right. <coughs> a little extra yeah. prayer for me. Put me down for a little extra prayer. All right. All right. Amen. All right. Okay, Sheena, welcome back. I hadn't seen you in a while. Thanks, hey, Sheena. Thank you. <laughs> She's right. I, yeah, I don't do dictation. Uh, <laughs> I barely can read it when I'm home. Okay. Uh, it's being prayer for me. I need a lot of prayers right now. Amen. Okay. And my sister's moving to Florida. Right. Make sure that she has a safe journey. Right. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you. All right, Miss Polly Silver, I'm biting at the bit. <laughs> well. Amen. Come on. Praise God. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. That's what we're waiting on. One, <laughs> one afraid person last week. And I went to, they thought they was going to have to operate because they thought they saw a mass. And I went to my oncologist, is that how you say it? Oncologist. And he went down there and he looked up in there and he said, when people get old, their bladders fold. In other words, I'm old. But, and that's what they saw in the, in the, in the scan. I knew Jesus was there. <laughs> I, I prayed for him and I knew that he was, I wasn't going to happen. There you go. There you go. There you go. So we're all so advancing blessed. the journey of life. So whenever you go to the doctor, hey doctor, I'm old by the way. So turned, anything that looks old in there, I don't even know about it. He turned, he turned a mass into a fold, right? Yes. yes. That's what they said. A mass of people into it. a fold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was. I thought it was pretty good. It is Into good. a fold, you know. Okay. Welcome to the fold. I was. F O A L. I was so blessed. Amen. I mean, yeah. I was so blessed. Amen. That's Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Well, you know, I rebuked it Sunday. Oh, yes. Right for yeah. the pulpit. Oh, yeah. Okay. You did. You? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm right. I'm you shouldn't have been. Su you shouldn't have been surprised. I'm <laughs> sitting there Sunday, and you just don't know the feeling that came over me. Good deal. In church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Was it a piece? Yes. <laughs> they saw my face. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know it's not my turn to talk. With, I always talk out of turn, but I just have to say this in, in relation to what oh, Paul yeah. When <laughs> Woody, sure. I said, Woody, because you know, I was back with the kids, did, did um, Holly come up front for prayer? He goes, no. And I said, oh, we need to go over there. So then he said, okay, we'll see you next time. Bible study, da, da, da. And then we went over there. And I'm telling you, whatever you had in you, which was Jesus. Yes. She had this peace over her. It ministered to me. I said, oh, my gosh, because <laughs> she's already fine. Yeah. And I felt that on Sunday. Good deal. And I, right. do, yeah. I do want 
I prayed for my friend Joni over in the park, which I had before. Uh -huh. You know, she's a vet, and she needs one of those portable... Uh, oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. But the VA, she went, and when they did her oxygen level, uh -huh. it was 90, and they said if her oxygen level had been 87, they would have got her one. She is. She has to stay at home because she she's on auction all the time. She doesn't, and she doesn't have the money to buy that twenty-five hundred dollars thing. Right, right, right. But I'll, I'll pray it. for her. Yeah, we'll continue. What's yeah. her name again? Joni. Yeah. Joni. Seely's her last name. Okay. But I feel bad for her because you know, if she does go, she has to go somewhere and come right back because mm -hmm. she has to get back on that oxygen. But the vet, they won't do anything for her. Mm. That's that's very sad. Yep. This yep. Is that well, I, I mean, they have that criteria that too, that, and, right. and I'm not saying it's yes or no or should or shouldn't, okay? But they do have criteria too that they have to meet, and uh, yeah, and, you know. I did my father-in-law that way too. Yeah. Or smoke a cigarette the next time before she gets a check. <laughs> well, there you go. We won't say who that. We won't say who that's from. Yeah. Is it unspoken person? Yeah. 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 There he is. Um, okay. Anything else? No, just pray for me, and I'm happy. All right. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, Ms. Norm. Um, I'm just happy to be here, Amen. and I enjoy this church. I'd like you to pray for my husband. He had a test the other day, and they found a nodule on his epiglottis. So we don't know whether it's a cancer that's returned or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend Lisa is waiting to find out what type of treatment they're going to give her for the cancer in her mm -hmm. And Four unspoken. Okay. <coughs> I missed something, but I'll get it from you later. Sorry. Okay. okay. Well, let's jump over here to John. Uh, just my friend's family, uh, Jennifer and kids, her side of the family, uh, they lost her wits, I don't know what's going on with Lost what? Lost her, lost her mind. Oh. Uh, her, her cousin. cousin. Yeah, her cousin got, I don't know, lost, went off the deep end. Of okay, well, let's, let's talk about that. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's, 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 all right. Do you want to use her name? Uh, Stacy. Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, she needs she needs some help. Stacy. All right. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Uh, Joseph's back, so he's doing good. Yeah. Just quick, quick heal. Uh, you know, God's fire and heal him, get him back on his feet. All right. He's out wandering around the cane, but he's getting around. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. Yeah, Joseph. All right. Anything else? Okay, good deal. Uh, yeah, Don't forget Shane. Yeah, Shane. Yeah, I just thought again. Right, right. And Woody, can I say something real quick? I'd like to thank each and every one of y'all that came and supported Vernon. Yeah. Uh, Shane, 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 we we'll do the best we can. Yeah. All right, Miss Terry, you're on. I want to um, keep Kathy Mansfield's mother right. uh, on protest because they had to keep her longer. Carol. Carol yeah. Morris. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they found something else that yeah. in a CT scan, I think it was, right? Okay. Yeah. So they want to further investigate that. Um, so we're praying that. What did you say? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke right. you, Satan. Okay. And then. Um, uh, my sister and my dad and his entire family. We have a sick family member, um, which is my dad's sister, and her name is Janet, my aunt. So she's like a mother to me. She's and, on hospice. Yeah, she's on hospice. She's very sick. Very, and uh, she's she's awesome. She's a gourmet cook and everything, and her poor husband can't get any meals from her now. So she needs to be taken care of. So <laughs> let's be praying for her. Um, and uh, my work. Jim. Oh yeah, and Jenny, I'm sorry. Jenny's not able to be here tonight. She she needs prayer. She requests prayer for her and her family. And specifically Miana and Ricky. Yes, specifically Miana and Ricky, yeah. which are 
two of her daughters. Right. Aww. And then, um, uh, let's see, I, I have um, an unspoken, actually two unspoken, and I probably better not say God knows my heart, Woody knows all about it, probably too much. <laughs> Money for listening to me. All right, and okay. that's it. Right. And then um, just praise that we're able to come here together every Wednesday night because yeah. if, if, if I didn't have this Wednesday night, I don't know where I'd be. So I'm thankful you guys are all here because this, there's some strength in here mm -hmm. and it comes from God. And I'm just, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else on a Wednesday night. We're going to come here together because you finally get in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, okay, otherwise, well, otherwise we your, come separately. Okay, wait, we're on Woody. That's his praise report. Okay. Jerry got in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brother Jack. Church, Fellowship Hall, Arena Ministry, a leader for that. Yeah. I want to lift up uh, my family members. Michelle. Expressed out something first, so we need to really let her look. put about five stars behind her name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad. Yeah. Okay. And we're planning a trip to Indiana to see him just after our, celebra our resurrection celebration. It's in April. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And my prayer Amen. for all of those lost souls out there that the Lord will give them. Yeah. Put somebody in their life to lead them to Him and salvation. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Can I add to sure, sure, sure. Beverly? Sure. Yeah, I was going to say that. Thank well, you. I imagine because it's cold yeah, this reason he's not out. out I would He's just not getting out at all. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. I called Beverly this morning. But I probably talked her ear off, so we didn't get to that. I had to probably. We probably went both ways. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. Last Saturday, uh, I went with a friend to a women's conference in Dallas. That's where I was when Jay got bit by the snake. Okay. And they had several really good speakers there. And, and uh, Dr. Jeffers' daughter was one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, her, her whole context of her message was, when you pray, be specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And be persistent. You know, she said, God is like our parents they want to hear our voice and God wants to hear sure. our voice and he doesn't care if we bug him to death about it That's right. and that was all related to difficult pregnancies having miscarriages and then she started she and her husband started praying for multiples they had triplets wow. without artificial anything you know We're not and so <laughs> <laughs> but you know she, she had three miscarriages and God gave her three babies Amen. you know and yeah. so you know she said you know be specific <coughs> sure with your you have to be and then keep after it don't get you have up. to be you know so I just think that's all awesome. and, right. and of course believe that you're yeah. going to receive it you know Mark right. 11 23 yeah. when you ask believe that you received it and, you'll, right. and you have it so. that's right so y'all just carry that thought with you there you go specific and persistent well, actually, like since it's my turn, yes. uh, is that, uh, you know, our uh, our scripture that we're learning on Sundays, uh, says, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request or your needs known unto the Lord. Right. And that's exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. exactly what that scripture is saying. Well, is that if you have to write it, <laughs> if you have to write it down, then write it down. But if you have it in your memory, continue asking him. Uh, I brought up, I think, last Sunday or Sunday before about the persistent widow. I mean, that's exactly what the, what he, she's talking about and exactly what God's talking about. Is that don't let it slip through the cracks. He wants to hear from you. But you gotta you got to speak it out there. And uh, and he does answer prayers to all believers, you know. I mean, uh, I, my... It's not really a prayer request, but it's it's a thanks, you know, just think that we can go to him and and offer these things up for prayer and that we know that he hears it. And uh, we write them down because, and that's the reason that we write them down and we always have is because it's the scripture says by prayer and petition. 
Make your needs known to the Lord. And so that's exactly what we're doing in order to stay with Scripture. Yes, sir. When I ask about the Gary Wendy Hooper for mm -hmm. guidance and wisdom from the Lord, Kay Matheny for her. She's getting real, real close to right. making the journey home to the Lord. All right. And just pray that it goes very easy on her. And, and easy on Joe as possible. Yes. That's why I don't want to go. Okay. Well, it's Gracie. She's a, she, she's, she's fine. She's fine. Anyway, uh, I think we need to, the scripture that the Lord gave uh, Donna was a very good script, a very good scripture, one that we really need. And we're not doing that simply to try to impose anything on the church. There's meaning behind that scripture. And we need to learn what that scripture means. Even if you're not in Bible study, if you're at home and you want to pray for things, write them down. Terry keeps a journal and she writes things down in her journal that she wants to, that she prays for. And because that's what scripture says. And then let your needs be known to the Lord. Okay? And uh, so we ought to do that. Um, I thank God that we can come to Him with all these things, all these situations, all these issues. And uh, I, I know He's got it. I'm comfortable in my heart. I know many of you are, if not all of you, that uh, we just trust in the Lord, you know, totally. So we don't worry about it. We don't stress over it. We don't concern ourselves with it, unless we can do something about it at the time. We just let Him handle it. And that's what we are to do. Yes, sir? I have something to do that. Yeah. The, yes, we are to go to him and let him know. But a lot of times, the conversation is, "God, did you do that?" And then there's a brief pause for a second, mm -hmm. where you know maybe he can make something, say something, have a you know bring something to you, sure. and then continue on again. It's like that person trying to get a word in edgewise with his wife. Every time he starts to say something, she jumps in with something else. I wonder who that is. And <laughs> don't you know God feels that way sometimes? Because people get down. And, and I'm not saying anything wrong for the praying. I know. They're not being still That's right. and listening. That's right. Well, we have, to, under, we have to understand that God is not most always, most always, God is not going to answer your prayer in your time. No. And our in time is immediate. Time. So therefore don't expect it. Now, in you some cases have something else. <coughs> in some cases it can know. happen immediately. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But in most cases it's not going to happen immediately. So we have because he's teaching us patience. We have to wait on the Lord. Our time is not his time. But he might have something else he wants us to That's right. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna lay this on you and go, Wow, where'd that thought come from? Right. Yeah, something to add to it. Something we may need to add to it. Sometimes your unanswered prayers are some of your best prayers. Yeah, there's song there somewhere in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's lift it up to the Lord. Uh, who's going to pray us in tonight? <clears throat> Colleen, will you pray us in? I haven't said that in a long time, but I'll try. You can do it. That's why I'm asking. Thank you for this opportunity of us getting together and Amen. learning your word. I ask that you be with those that are not here tonight, Lord. And I pray that each and every one of us will have safe travels home. Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings, the good ones and the bad ones. I ask that you be with each and every one of us, Lord. Lead us and guide us in the direction that you want us to go. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. Thank you very much, sister. That was very good. <coughs> All right, we're in chapter 3. Who's going to read tonight? Anybody in particular? Going once. Going twice. All right, I'll read. All right, we're in chapter, John chapter 3. Are you really going to read? Hey, I love reading. I, I mean, I don't like... I love reading the scriptures. I'll just leave it with that. Okay? Everybody there? No. Now there was a Pharisee. Stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start I know. 
It's getting warm in here. Y'all pretty warm? Yeah. I'm cooking. Thank you. Can you turn that down, please? It's hot. Yeah, I'm, I'm cooking. We were cold and now we're hot. All right, now there was a Pharisee, and we need to first understand who the Pharisee is. A Pharisee is, is a... He's not the governing body of the Jews. The governing body of the Jews are the Sadducees. The, gov the, uh, the Pharisees are the keepers of the law. They're the very astute people that really put themselves in that position. They're like the upper class, if you will. And they, if you've ever met some... I've met a lot of very rich people, including Ross Perot. And uh, there's a lot of rich people who are very down to earth and very sincere and, you know, if you will, not stuck up, etc. But then I've met some other rich people that are just high and mighty. And it's like, uh, you don't talk to me, you talk to my man or my boy or my or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so there, this is what the Pharisees were like. They were the keepers of the law. They were the ones who were given the law in order to guide and direct the Israel, Israelites or the Jewish people in the ways of the law and, and what the, the, they're supposed to do as far as following the law. Uh, but the problem is, is that they added 603 laws to God's 10 laws. And so there's 613 laws that the Jewish people had to, to meet because the Pharisees thought, well, since, you know, we're the really smart people of the group, well, we need to make sure that everybody does this this way and does this this way and this this way. And so we're going to indoctrinate that into a law and, and into a, uh, it's not a command of God, but into a command of the ruling people, not the ruling people, of the keepers of the law so that we can make sure everybody understands that this is how they're supposed to be. Well, the only problem was is nobody could be high and mighty like them because they didn't have the financial and the education and the moral support and all that like everybody else did. And so the Pharisees were people who, were, who thought of themselves more high and mighty than anyone else. And that's why Jesus, boy, he, came, he comes down on them, I mean, just time after time after time, saying, woe to you Pharisees, you know, you, you fools, you... Uh, you um, uh, Huh? Hypocrites. Hypocrites. That's the word I was looking for. And on and on and on and on because they put the burden on the people and expected the people to follow these laws, but they themselves didn't follow them. Okay? Now, so they weren't the governing body, but they were kind of the ruling body or the keepers of the law. In other words, they were the very, very smart, supposedly the very, very smart people. Now, why is that important? It's because Nicodemus was one of the smartest, smartest people. He was like maybe the Ross Perot, okay? Or maybe the Donald Trump. Or, you know, uh, you know one of the really, really high up in the Pharisee uh, organization, if you will. He was very, very high. And he comes to Jesus in the middle of the night. Yeah. You're right? ahead of yourself, yeah. I know that's what I'm going to read. I'm going to stop. Because I got a question there. I got a question there. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. Now, not the governing council, but the ruling council. He came to Jesus in the night and said, Rabbi, we know, and get this now, I love this. Rabbi, we know, the ruling council knows that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. Wow. We know that you are from God. You're not of this world, if you will. You're not, a, you're not like us. You're a bit more special. Yeah. <laughs> All right? But, we don't like it. <laughs> say again? And we don't like it. Yeah, well, they don't. They don't. But why did he come to him in the middle of the night? Now, there's a couple of people, or a couple of things that, that people believe about this, but there's one reason that he didn't come in the middle of the night. Anybody got a clue? Well, yeah. His parents, you know, would have ridiculed him. And, and Anybody else think of anything else? He could have more time. He didn't have to rush anything. Yeah. Anybody got anything else? The number one answer is Donna's answer. is because he didn't want anybody to see him. That's what I said. Yeah. He, yes, he could spend more time with Jesus. He could have more direct contact with him. And all. But the number one answer, this guy came to Jesus because it was against their law for them to be out after dark. Yeah. 
and doing anything. And he came to Jesus in the middle of the night because he didn't want anybody else to see him going and talking and reaching out to the Messiah. And then he says to Jesus, he says, we know. I mean, he's, he's actually saying, I'm here because I need to be here and I know I should be here, but I don't want anybody else to know I'm here. Because they may not like me as much, if you will. All right? But he says, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. Okay? He didn't say, now, we know you're a teacher that is God. We know that you are the Son of God. He didn't say any of that. But he says that we know that you are a teacher who has come directly from God. And he's saying this in, in an em, em, emphatic way that there's no, in other words, there's no other reasoning, there's no other explainable answer that you could be from anywhere else. You have to be from God. Because no one could perform the signs and the miracles and, and the wonders that you're doing unless they were directly in connection with God and had the power that God had. So here's the ruling council that is, and it's because of them that Jesus was crucified. God put it on them to, to, uh, to hate Christ because he was going to take away their, their thunder or spoil their pleasures or, or uh, you know, uh, people were going to follow Christ instead of following the Pharisees because they were the keepers of the law, all right? They were the religious people. They were, I don't want, I'm not trying to imply the Pope, but they were like the Pope, you know? They were the, uh, oh, everybody paid homage to them. And they loved it. They absolutely loved it. They ate it up. All the attention. And, and another scripture, Jesus says, well, you know, uh, you, you hypocrites, what do you? Because you come into the synagogues and, and you expect to everybody to pay homage to you and to get the best seats and on and on and on and on. And they did. They expected all that. They expected everybody to honor them. Whereas Jesus is saying that you should honor God and not man. That's right. All right? And they did not like it. And that's the reason that they wanted Jesus killed. But he says, We know that you have come from God because nobody else can perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with you. <coughs> then Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Mm -hmm. Now, born again simply means to be born in the Greek, simply means to be born of heaven, or yeah. born from above. Alright? Because you have to use the translation. If you've got a, uh, a uh, parallel Bible or a uh, uh, reference Bible, it'll probably have a letter or something by there, and down at the bottom of your page it'll say that it, uh, to be born again in the Greek simply means to be born from above or born of God. Okay? Huh? Or from above. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's what it means. Alright? How can someone, Nicodemus says, how can someone born uh, be born whenever they are old? Nicodemus says, Surely you cannot enter the second time into the mother womb and be born to be born. Now Nicodemus is thinking from a worldly sense. He's sitting there thinking, Well no, wait a minute, to be born again? There's only one way to be born. You know, many people think that uh, well, how in the world can a loving God say that there's only one way to go to heaven, which is through Jesus Christ, right? right. All right, well, how many ways are there to be born by man? One. There's only one way. So there's not another way to be born by man. So there's only one way. So it's only fair that there's only one way to be born again, and that is by Christ and through Christ. So when people debate that and they say, oh, well, no, you can be born this way or you can go to heaven this way or that way. No. Uh, in John uh, 14, uh, 6, it says that there's only one way on the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him, through Jesus. So there's only one way. Well, there's only one way to be born of earth, and this is what Nicodemus is, th is talking about. He says, how can I be born again? If I'm an old person, can I literally go back up into my mother's womb and be born again? Well, of course, he knows that that's not true. So he's thinking from a worldly standpoint, whereas he should be trying to think, trying to think from a spiritually standpoint. He's talking to the guy who is walking with God. 
You know, he's talking to the Messiah. He knows that it's he's the Messiah, but he doesn't want to admit it. He does not want to admit it because the Pharisees cannot accept Christ as the Messiah. If it were, then they would be totally blown out of the uh, out of the um, not out of the saddle, but out of the um, respect of others because they always taught that the Messiah is coming back to overthrow, to free Israel and to overthrow the Roman Empire. All right, that's who they expected the Messiah to be. Whereas the Messiah came to be back, came to be as a sacrificial lamb. Well, still, because he is coming back as that sacrificial lamb, it is still to save Israel. The same thing, just not in the way that they wanted it. So again, it goes back to, you know, God's answers and our answers are not always the same. You know? All right, so he says, uh, how, can a woman, how can a guy be born again? Can he go back in his mother's womb? Jesus, Jesus replied, <coughs> verse 5 says, very truly, you know, when he says verily, verily, or very truly, or uh, truly I say, or something like that, that, you really need to pay attention to that. It says, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Born of water and the Spirit. Now, most people will think that whenever it says born of water and the Spirit, that he's talking about being born like a natural birth, like the embryonic fluid that is in a mother's womb. We call it when it breaks. We call it the water's broke or whatever. Well, that's not the water that he's talking about. When you research this and, and you go back and find out, you, you will see that the Word itself, God's Word itself, is the water. It is considered as being the water and, and it washes away the sin. The, the Word of God washes away. And the Word of God is Jesus, of course. But the Word of God washes away your sins. The Word of God forgives. The Word of God teaches. The Word of God instructs, etc., etc. The Word of God quenches the thirst. On and on and on and on and on. And so the Word of God, the Word, is the water. So in other words, whenever he's telling Nicodemus here, he's saying that you must be baptized in the water and in the Spirit. He is saying that you must be baptized in the Word, which is Jesus, remember? John 1. Remember we saw that back over in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and et cetera, et cetera. And then over in 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among, among us, which Jesus is the Word. So even though it's not capitalized, is anybody capitalized? Okay, well, he's, he is literally talking about being baptized in the Word of God. In other words, you must understand who Jesus is and why He is, etc., etc., and follow Christ. But then you also must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's why He says baptized in the Spirit. We have to be baptized. You, I'm just going to point to you if that's okay, if I can pick on you. Okay, you would not come to know who Christ was unless you heard it from somebody preaching to you or teaching you, right? There's no way you could know, right? And if they're teaching you the Word, then you're going to receive the Word and understand the Word, and then you're going to be you're going to make the determination that I need to change and be baptized now in the Spirit, right? Okay, I mean that's the way it works. And that you have something. Well, that's why at the well when he was talking to the lady that went to the well, he says, "I'm the water that that you you take first to thirst." Yeah, it takes you're, you know. In other words, he quenches you, your body. He's, he's the one that that gives you that spirit to, to go on the right way. Right. And, the, and that's what he's saying here about the water way. He's saying, you know, born of the water and of the spirit. Right. You know, he is the water. He is. He's the word. You he's better believe it. If, if, you, if you accept him... And you receive the Spirit. From That's him. right. That's right. And you're not going to receive the Spirit unless you receive Him. Right. Yeah. So you can be baptized, if you will, and I'm going to let, let me finish this. You can be baptized in the world, Word, in a sense, by but not getting all of the Word and understanding it. And when I say baptized, I just simply mean hearing it and, and kind of understanding it. But if you don't really understand it and really receive it, you're not going to be baptized in the Spirit. And so many Christians, are, if they want to call Christians, are that, at that point because they don't have enough knowledge. They don't know who Christ is enough in order to make a determination. Well, should I be baptized or should I not? I don't really know. Well, wait a minute. I got dunked in the water when I was three. Well, somebody threw, my mom says somebody sprinkled some water in my face. 
you know, when I was an infant, am I baptized, am I not? You know, I don't know. I, what am I supposed to do? Unless you get into the Word, unless you come to know who Christ is through His Word, you're not going to know where you're at. So you can't be baptized in the Spirit because you don't have a clue where you're even at. Right. See what I'm saying? So that's what Jesus is talking about. He's saying, look, you have to, you have to truly know to be baptized means to be immersed in. Okay? It comes from the Greek word baptismo. means to be immersed. And it, you have to be, you have to it literally immerse yourself like we're doing at Bible Stubble. Bible Stubble. <laughs> Bible Stubble. Bible study. You have to literally, okay, you have to literally immerse yourself in the Word. You have to lit literally immerse yourself in the Word and understand it and try to get to the depths of the, of the Scriptures in order to actually receive what you need to know. Because anybody can take a scripture and just say, oh yeah, this scripture means this, or this scripture means that. I mean, we quote the, uh, the Corinthians uh, so often where, you know, uh, God, no, God uses everything for the good. Oh, yeah. That's an inaccurate quote. quote. It's an inaccurate interpretation of the, of the scripture. It's just really and truly a, a lie, okay? It's incomplete. It's incomplete, very incomplete. Mm -hmm. So, unless you really know what that whole scripture says, then you're not, not going to, you're not going to know what Paul was talking about. Well, that's the same thing about Christ's his teachings. Unless you know and get into the study and immerse yourself into the studying of, of the scriptures, you're not going to really know what it's about. You're going to know of Christ, but you're not going to know Christ. So you have to get, you have to understand and get in the depths of it. I, I keep using immerse, but that's a good word. You have to immerse yourself and, and get underneath the word and understand what the word is. And that's what Christ is talking about here. He's not talking about literal water, sprinkled water, whatever. He's not talking about the ambiotic water. He's talking about the Word of God, which is Jesus. Right. You have to know Jesus, and you have to know the Holy Spirit, because you don't get the Spirit without Jesus. You don't right. get it. Yes, Kenny? And part of my notes here, it says I've got in the Old Testament, when water was used with Spirit, and they would talk about it. Okay, it we do that. Ezekiel. Cleansing. Ezekiel, go to Ezekiel 36. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's in Ezekiel 36, verse 24. I actually marked my book earlier because I remember that and I forgot to mention that then. It's in Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel is right after Jeremiah, I think, and right after Isaiah. Yeah. Ezekiel 36. Verse 24. Yeah, before Daniel. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. And you can mark this or whatever you want to do. It goes 24 through 27. It's actually 25 through 27, but we'll start at 24. Let's wait till everybody gets there. Ezekiel 36. Everybody there? Yep. You got it? Ezekiel 36. Oh, you well. Keep going. You're way over here. 30. Ah, cool. 34. 36. You should be on the next page. There's two pages there. So let's see if you can separate those pages. There we go. Yeah, all right, 24, right there. Okay, it says, For I will take you out of the nations. In other words, I will take you out of the normal people, the regular people, you know, everybody else. Are y'all there? No. Oh, okay. Jack, you want to help them out there? I can't even find it with a Bible clip. <coughs> Bible thing. It's between Daniel and Jeremiah. There's Jeremiah. Daniel. Let Kenny find it real quick, Gina. Yeah. Ezekiel 36. Now remember, when the scriptures talk about seas and nations and things like that, they're really talking about people a lot of times, and this is one of those times. So Ezekiel 36, 24. 
For I will take you out of the nations, out of the normal group of people, and I will gather you to all, from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle, sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Now, that's where the sprinkling comes and the sprinkling the kids and all that kind of stuff. But they've actually changed it and called it, called it the, uh, uh, no, dead, not the dedication of the kid, but the uh, christening. Thank you. Christening. christening of the child. Okay, a child does not get baptized. Why? Because a child, pardon me, a child doesn't know any different. You have to, each person, each and every person has to come to their own conclusion at some point in time. So that child has to grow up and make his choice to whether he's going to receive Christ or not. Now, when you do a dedication of a child, what you're doing is, and you can sprinkle water on them if you want to, but what you're doing is, is you're, you're asking the parents to make a covenant or a promise to God that they will raise that child up in a godly home. That's what a baby, a, a baby uh, dedication is, all right? It's sprinkling is you don't have to do any of the sprinkling if you don't want to, but if the parent wants to, you can. But it means nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. However, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your impurities, uh, from all your idols. I will give you a new heart, a change of heart. Remember, when Christ comes in us, we are a new creation, mm -hmm. and He lives in our heart, so we get a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. That's exactly what happens whenever we receive Christ. We get that new spirit in us, in our hearts. You skip two words. What? Flesh. What? You got a new heart of flesh. Probably not in mine. Is not in mine. You just haven't got that far. That, that's further off. Yeah, I'm not down there yet. You're jumping way ahead of me, Vernon. I mean, uh, Jack. <laughs> that's the end. I'm just kidding right. you, buddy. I will okay, alright, let me go back up here. I'm 25. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. See? So, in other words, he gets, gets rid of that hardened heart that the Pharisees have and that the Jews have, and he gives us that new heart. That new heart. Now, when he's talking about the new heart of flesh, he's talking about a new, uh, a new heart uh, towards man, our fellow man. You know, love your brother as, you, as Christ loves you. Okay, you get a new heart. That's how, that's how you're able to love your enemies is because Christ has given you a new heart with him in it. That's the difference. All right? All right, so we good with that? All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you bet. Good point. Good point. And, and we're actually going to see that again here in a little bit. All right? Uh, I have no idea where we were. Uh, six. Verse six. All right. Uh, now, this is real good right here. Even though he just said over in Ezekiel that I'll give you a new heart of flesh, he's talking about a, a, uh, the heart that was intended God for you to originally have, which is a, a loving heart, not a hardened heart. But he comes back now and he says, flesh gives birth to flesh, this is verse 6 of John 3, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Now what's he talking about there, anybody? Huh? Go ahead. <laughs> You're not going to be wrong. Well, I'm just saying, you know, born flesh to flesh, like, you know, giving birth. And that's exactly right. And then the Spirit, when God gives you the good, loving heart, you have the Spirit. That's exactly what it is saying. Yeah. That's exactly what it's saying. See, we're born with a, a fleshly heart mm -hmm. that we get by him being a human being, made in the image of God. Okay? We get that. Yeah. All right? However, the Spirit will give us a new heart. And that will be the Spirit of God. Because you remember back up here it says that uh, and the Spirit gives birth... Uh, wait a minute. What did it say? Uh, so it's not in here. It's back over yonder. I will get over in Ezekiel where it yeah. says that I will give you a new heart, uh, a heart of the Spirit. Right. And that's exactly what he's talking about. He says, you've already got the old heart or the fleshly heart whenever you get born. And every time somebody gets born, they have a fleshly heart. They have a human heart. A, a, a heart that, that God is after. But when they get born of the Spirit, 
Now, there's a big difference here because this is a difference between just non-believers and believers. The ones who have a flesh heart, if that's all they have, then they're a non-believer. They're a non-believer. Everybody who's ever born is a non-believer. They're not born a Christian. No one is. And it goes back to what we talked about about the sprinkling of the babies. Okay? That baby ha now that baby is protected. Okay, for you moms, that baby is protected all the way up until the point of its accountability. The point of its count. I use my son as an example. My son is forty-six. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> he will never achieve the point of accountability. He never will. He can't reason that much. Okay. I mean, he loves the Lord and and he believes in Jesus Christ, etc., etc., etc. Et but if you were to really try to get him to explain some of it, he couldn't do it because he doesn't have that. All right. But so he would be protected even at forty-six. All right. And if something were to happen to him, heaven forbid. He would be covered and he would go directly to the Lord and be with the Lord. Yeah. However, if there's somebody at age seven or eight and they truly know why they're being baptized or truly know why they're not being baptized, they are at the, the age of accountability. Seven? Oh, that was a little bit higher. They, it can be whatever. It's, there's not a certain age. Yeah. It's, it's their mental aptitude. And there's some brilliant kids. And if they understand at five, six, seven years old, then they understand. If they don't, then they don't. I've baptized kids that were eight, nine years old, and I've had kids that come to me that were 13, 14, 15 years old who didn't have a clue. And I said, and I've told their parents, I will not baptize them because they don't know why they're being baptized. They have not a clue. And most of the time, it's because the parent has not taught them. It's not because the kid's not smart enough. It's because the kid has not been given the knowledge. Okay. Uh, and that's the parents' fault. So, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit, and only the Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. All right? And those are the believers. Those are the believers. And then Jesus says to him, You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. Like you said a while ago, Don't you understand? Don't you get this? What's up with you, fella? Okay? And we're going to see it even more so in a little bit where he kind of gets perturbed with him. All right. You must be born again. Again, being born again is being born from above, not born again in the natural sense. Now, Jesus goes on to explain how the Holy Spirit works. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell or see where it comes from or where it is going. We cannot see the Holy Spirit. Can we hear His sound? Yes, we can. Why? Because we hear it in our spirit. See, we don't hear it in, like the wind. You can hear the wind out there blowing, right? Okay, but you don't see the wind. You can see the effects of the wind, but you don't see the wind itself. You don't know where the wind comes from, and you don't know where it's going to end up. Okay? It just blows as it blows. Well, the Holy Spirit is the exact same way. You can hear the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. You can see the effects of the Holy Spirit because He affects your life and changes your life, hopefully. If He doesn't, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. See, the um, proof of, of having the Holy Spirit is a change in your life. If you say, oh yeah, I'm baptized, you know, I go to church, blah, 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 but there's absolutely no change in your life, there's probably not a Holy Spirit living in you either. Okay? Right. But now, if you do some things that, that kind of convict you, that, you know, you say, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, or maybe I need to change this, or maybe I need to act a different way, or, or whatever, maybe I need to go to church, maybe I need to do Bible study. If you see some fruit of the Spirit working in your life, then you probably have the Spirit. Now, I know in my life, I've got a lot of work to do yet. A whole lot of work. I do. A lot of work. However, I do see work. I see a big change in my life from what it used to be. A huge change. Okay? But I got a long way to go. Because I know where I've been. I know where I'm at. And I know where I need to go. And see, so therefore, and I'm not putting myself above anybody else. I'm only speaking for myself. I feel as though I have the Spirit leading me. Though I may argue with Him a lot. You know? But, but you see, but if you don't see any change in you, 
and in your emotions and in your thought process and in your feelings and such and in your life, then you might want to take another look. Yep. Not that I'm trying to judge or anybody's trying to judge, but you should judge. Mm -hmm. Okay? We need to judge ourselves. We need to look at ourselves, see where we're at each and every day. Search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. You bet. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. First Corinthians two thirteen says, "Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, right. but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things and spirit with spiritual." Right. You bet. Well, that's again, that's the Holy Spirit guiding and teaching us from within. Right. We don't uh, we don't sit there, and this is really kind of important. Um, any, we kind of talked about this earlier. Anybody can teach you how to live or tell you how you should live. Yeah. Okay? And they will. <laughs> Even if you don't ask, they will. Okay? Oh, yeah. They're more than happy. <laughs> They're more than happy to share their opinions with you. I was, <laughs> I was talking to somebody. Not everybody has that gift, right? I, okay. Some of us have that okay, gift okay. sharing our business. I was talking with someone today and they were telling me about the situation that's going on in their life. And the first thing I told this person, I said, look, I'm not your judge. I said, you're an adult. The other person is an adult. And that's between y'all. I said, you know, y'all know what you should and should not or if you should and should not and on and on and on and on. I said, I'm not here to judge you. God is your judge. You talk to him, and if he says you're good to go, then well, who am I to say? That's right. Okay? But you'll have so many people just biting at the bit to tell you how you need to change. Yeah. And biting at the bit, don't point anymore. And biting <laughs> <laughs> it. <Whoa. laughs> He's pointing at John. Right? <laughs> you quit talking, teaching me on a man there. You gotta get off the subject now. <laughs> but, but, I rebuke but my you, point, Satan. But my, my point is, is that we, okay? And this this is okay. This is really my point, though. This is really my point. Yeah. Most of the time, we take it to heart because it hurts our feelings. Or it encourages us. Or we sit there and we think, well, you know, maybe I'm not so good. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, what we have to do, it goes back to what our scripture is. By prayer, by prayer, by prayer, talking to God. By prayer and petition, make your needs known unto the Lord. Okay? Amen. You go back to Him and you let the Holy Spirit. That We're going to learn this whenever we get over into John 16, 15 and 16. The Holy, in uh, 8 I think it is. The Holy Spirit is to be your teacher now. So, yes, you can listen to other people, and, and believe me, they will be more than happy to convict you and condemn you and everything else. But what you need to do is listen to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit be your guide. That's right. Be your counselor. That's why He's called the advocate. He's called the counselor. He's called the comforter. Okay? That's His job. That's His job is to talk to you and teach you. Because if you are now born by the Spirit, you have the Spirit of God living in you, but you got to let, back to what Kenny was saying earlier, you got to let God talk sometime. you got to let Him talk. Well, okay? can't you make suggestions without it being done? I love that, Colleen. <laughs> can I applaud that? <laughs> but you have to, you know, there's, there's times you're going. Okay, listen up, please. Listen up, please. You're going. I know I need to pray. Mm-hmm. What I need to pray about. Right. Again. Right. That's where the Spirit comes in. Yep. And he'll do the talking for you. That's right. To God. And then through the Spirit, you know what God wants you to do. There you go. There you go. The, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. Trust me, He will. But you have to listen. That's the big problem that we have. Is yeah, that we, we, have. we listen to other. You know, it's crazy. We listen to other people so much, but we don't listen to Him as much right. as we should. Yeah. And that's already breaking the first commandment, right? That's not another. Well, no, I don't really think that's putting another God above God, well, but it is putting somebody else, uh, somebody else God. in you. Yeah, it's kind of ignoring God. Well, it yeah. might be. Okay, yeah. all right, you got it. You're on. I mean, that's how I'm seeing. Do you have something to add? Were you going to say something? That has a whole lot to do with your conscience. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it really does because you know where you're at, and if you feel as though that they're on or right on. 
then you know you let it sink even deeper, all right? But that's where we have to go back and understand that God is the one; He's the judge. And yes, I've done this and I've done that, and I you know should have done this and should have done that, and I keep failing here and blah 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 blah. But there are no Romans eight one. There are no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, there's conviction, but there are is no condemnation. And people will try to condemn you. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. That's if they're called to this purpose. That's, they may be condemnation if you're not called. Well, those those who are not a child of God, there is, and it all goes on down to say that at the bottom of, of that page, it says they have already condemned themselves because they have not God. Yeah. Yeah. See? I mean, even even without saying or whatever, they've already condemned themselves because they don't believe. They don't they haven't received God. So it is for only believers. It is for only believers. Alright. Um, Can I say something no. about the suggestion? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so the Bible also says do everything in love. So if you see your brother or sister in trouble and you want to make a suggestion, no. it's only because you're trying to offer them something out of the kindness of your heart. But then again, maybe you should question yourself before you speak that suggestion. Is it really necessary that I speak this suggestion? Maybe the Holy Spirit wants me to be quiet. Okay, so well, Scripture, well, Scripture says the older shall teach the younger and the, and the younger shall listen to the older. And basically what that is saying is not necessarily saying of age. Okay, yeah. it is of knowledge. Uh, like whenever you and I get together. I mean, you yeah. teach me some things, I teach you some things. Things that you know, things that I know. You know, we go back and right. forth. Mm -hmm. And basically what it is saying is those who are knowledgeable, the best scripture is, is over in, um, it's in Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy, I think it is. I think it's 4. And it talks about the older women should teach the younger women to love their husbands. And what it's saying there is that the, the women who know how to love their husbands need to teach the younger girls who don't know how to love their husbands how to love their husbands, okay? And it's basically the same thing that, uh, let me put it this way, the scripture also says those who, who know how to treat their wives should teach the ones who don't know how to treat their wives, the younger people. You see what I'm saying? Is that just for believers yeah. though? The scripture is for the, the scripture is for believers. Okay, it's not the word of God is not for people who do not believe in the word of God. It would apply to them. It would be good for them to you know use it and try to understand it. But the word of God, but the word of God is only for believers. Okay, because you can't just believe in part of the Bible. It is a basic instruction before leaving earth. It's good instructions. But the Bible is not for those who refuse to believe. It's just not. Because they don't believe. Well, those who refuse to believe aren't going to be reading the Bible anyway. Most of the time. But yet, they'll sometimes they'll pick it up and they say, Oh yeah, well I heard in the Bible it says blah, 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 blah. Okay? Well that's, you know, that's... Because a lot of times there's things in the Bible that you want to tell them that they want to listen to or not. Yeah, <laughs> boy, isn't that true? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So you still have to do. You still have to do what you have to do. Right. Well, again, you know nobody's gonna pay you like you said earlier, though, you can do it in love. Okay. Right. You, you you know if you have, again, we're to encourage each other. We're to edify each other. We're to lift each other up. So if you know how somebody is hurting and you can help them, and say, well, you know, and here's the best way, really and truly, or the best example. Okay. I've been through what you're going through. I made it through, and this is how God got me through it. Okay, that helps somebody else understand that if somebody else can make it through, well, then maybe they can too. You're not telling them how to do it, but you're telling them what God did to help you get through it. That, and it's a testimony. That's what it's called. Our testimonies. That is the best way to help somebody else. Now, for me to go and try to talk to a uh, uh, a drug addict wouldn't work. I have no idea. I I, I can't re really relate. I can tell them if they ask me what scripture says about, you know, taking things that mess up your mind, blah, blah, blah. But I cannot tell them how, what it's like to be a drug addict because I don't know. Okay? You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Okay? All right. Uh, you you know, have some Bibles for the unbelievers too. It is if they'll receive it. If they'll receive it. But well, it's it's the teachers, you know, it's it's 
you're supposed to use it for teaching to the Sure it is. And the, and that's how you get to the unbelievers. Sure. But yeah. just like Jesus, Jesus went to the he didn't go right. talk to the Sadducees and he went to the Pharisees. Right. He went to the sinners. Right. And, and, and well they were sinners too. Well yeah. well remember what I said was is that the Bible is for those who refuse to believe. Right. Yeah. It's not for it's not for those who will eventually believe. I mean, it is for those who will eventually believe, but it is not for those who refuse to believe. If if you're if you're just not going to to hear the word or listen to the word or understand the word, the Bible's not for you. Well, that's when that's when the Holy Spirit. If you're if you're going to talk to somebody that 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 doesn't want to believe in the Bible, if the Holy Spirit's leading you, mm -hmm. it's going to be right. Because I've done run into that. Sure. Yeah. You know, you're gonna he's gonna lead you. Right. And 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 it's gonna come out right. And so what what can you I don't wanna use that word, but what can you evaluate from that then? About that person? But not not the one not the one leading you leading being led to that person. What can you evaluate about that person that you've been led to? Well, the Holy Spirit's leading me to. Uh, the Holy That's Spirit's leading me to. Okay, and so what does that what does that mean? I mean, well, in this case, this young lady, she said, she goes, I don't want to hear it. Right. She goes, I'm not going to hear it. Okay, keep going. She said, my dad was had was a preacher, and I didn't want it then. I don't want it now. Yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden, the good keep Lord, going. And all of a sudden, the good Lord started giving me stuff. To okay. And so and, what happened and to her? The next thing I know, she's back in church. There you are. There you are. So see, she's one of the called. Whether she realizes it or not, doesn't matter. This is what Jack's uh, Jack's prayer is about. Yeah. See, Jack's prayer is about is somebody reaching the lost people that God sends us to. Right. See. So that's that's a conclusion. Is that the Holy Spirit is after that person, not you. Right. It's after that person. That person's already called whether they believe, believe it or not, whether they receive it or not, whether they want to believe it or not. It don't matter. God's going to win. But we God don't have, is going we to don't win. Have to be... It made her. It made her change and it made her. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Change, man. Okay, but somebody, uh, let me finish the scripture okay, real quick. Sorry. But there is a scripture actually in several of the gospels where Jesus tells his disciples, if you go into the house and they do not receive your right. blessings, you are to dust your feet yeah. Yeah. And, and go on no to the way. next town. Right. And yeah. Because there are people who will not believe. We right. went through that in Revelation. I mean, big time. Right. What do you have? Well, I think it's on the subject of, right. his, <laughs> of his subject. Okay, so what if there's a person in your life that you've been associated with, whether it be at work or whatnot, and you just can't let go of them then you're a pain in the neck. And you, they, you know that, <laughs> you know that they need the gospel, and they're this close to receiving it, but they're so headstrong. But why did I call this person, and she was all of a sudden available? We had a nice long conversation, and I'm just saying I just can't let go of Jack's prayer for this person. Maybe I'm not yeah. supposed to be the. Maybe I'm supposed to not be the. the well, no, it's or the Holy Spirit. What are you saying? The Holy Spirit but, is ur urging you to re try to reach that person. Yeah. And so you want to reach that person. I want to reach that person. And evidently, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is smart. Yeah. And so evidently, He knows that you're going to maybe. I'm not speaking for Him. Yeah. Eventually, reach that person. However, but it may take you planting all those seeds. And I'm just going to use this. And Donna coming along and watering it. And then it clicking. Well, I, you open the door, somebody else well, takes I, over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to do we got, we got three different conversations here. Lady that I work with that I've been associated for almost 20 years. And I cannot let go because I'll tell okay. you what. She, she's special. But okay. she just doesn't want to believe. But part of her seems to want to believe. There you I, go. I think some of your best teachers keep their mouth shut and show it through their actions. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I can't explain it, but I can. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let Jack do his or state his deal, please. One person will plant the seed. Right. Another one will come along. Right. And put water on it and get that seed to sprout. Right. 
third one will come along and reap the harvest. There you go. There you I go. Bring that individual to, to the right people at the right time. There you are. God's timing, right? There you are. All right. All right, John, you got something? Uh, about all this kind of clicked in my head. Well, my granddad had a little saying <coughs> back in the day where people would get in his car and say, Get in, sit down, shut up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. and what was that last I was thinking about it. Hold, hold on. on. Yeah, get in, get into the Word. Yeah. Sit down and listen. Right. Basically. Shut up and actually listen. Yeah. Because I was talking, trying to figure out different little things. Right. right. Just really feel what's going on. May you get into it. Right. And Should I write that in our house? No. Yeah. Hold on to it. Right. There you go. There you go. I like it. Okay, well, let's finish up the last part of eight here. Uh, so it is with everyone. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And we'll go back to the first part of eight. And the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. In other words, what John is saying here is, is guess what? You're not going to see it coming. You're not going to you're not going to know that it's coming, but when it comes, you'll feel it. Feel it. It'll, you'll feel it and you'll see the results of it. And that's why it says, and so it is so with all who are reborn. Okay? Because it doesn't happen to those who are not reborn, not as far as Jesus is concerned. Only those who are reborn. I remember the exact day. Day? And the way I felt. Cool. When the Lord called me to check and check them. I think. Yeah. A lot of people do remember. I don't. I don't remember. I, I don't know. Maybe I've had so much going on since then. I just don't. But I just don't. Years old, but still remember. Right. <laughs> well, now I remember when I got baptized. Yeah, I guess so. I do remember there at Beacon Baptist Church. I do remember that. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. I have a question. Lee. Yes, ma'am. I hear you talk about what I'm thinking is salvation, but you're using the terminology of getting baptized. Mm -hmm. Are you using those synonymously? Mm -mm. No, because salvation, if you really study the Scriptures, <coughs> you don't receive salvation. You receive the promise of salvation. Well. Salvation doesn't come until Christ comes back. Right. That's when our salvation is actually going to happen. We are receiving the promise of salvation. And by receiving the promise of salvation, that is only through the baptism or the receiving of Christ Jesus and Him guiding us from here until our salvation. Okay, so what are you calling the, the time when you ask Jesus to come into your heart? What, what word are you using for that? It is your baptism, baptism whenever you actually receive Christ in your heart. And we use it as a generic term, salvation. You receive your salvation. And it's actually you receive the promise of salvation, really and truly. But we use it as a generic term because people understand it. Mm -hmm. See? But you're at, if you actually study the Scriptures, you're receiving the promise of your salvation. Okay, I get that. Okay? But you're not actually going to receive salvation until the end. But people don't comprehend that. But I don't understand you calling it baptism because in my mind, baptism is the immersing in the water. There's, there's, there's two baptisms that we understand. One is the immersion, which is over in, in uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the baptism of Christ, being immersed in the water. That's the baptism of water. Or the baptism which John started out this book with, talking about the baptism of forgiveness, all right, by repentance, all right. That's the water baptism. The other baptism, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the you admitting and receiving Christ as your Savior. That's the true baptism. To go back to um, uh, Acts two in the uh, in the upper room at the uh, Pentecost. Nowhere does it say anything at all about the uh, baptism of water or in water or the baptism of repentance. It simply says the baptism of the Spirit and the Spirit overwhelmed them and they spoke and etc. Okay, so then when people ask, have you been 
baptized, baptized in the Spirit, where they're actually talking about, did you get the Holy Ghost? In other words, were you right, right. were you saved? Right, and a lot of people, and a lot of people. Those that you know use that terminology as an extra step, where you really get interested in speaking tongues and. You know, I know, I know, I know, I know. There, there is a. That's what they're after. They're going okay. about something. If you got baptized in the Spirit, you should be speaking, speaking in, in tongues. tongues, right? Because. Okay, because it is, it is a uh, uh, evidence. It is an evidence of the receiving of the Holy Spirit. But if you study through First Corinthians, there and the gifts of the Spirit, it's not a gift everybody has. Okay, but it does not mean that you don't get it. Okay, you can get it. Now, if you go to the Church of Christ and you go to some of the other denominations, they firmly believe that if you do not speak in tongues, you do not have the Holy Spirit, and they will tell you... Pentecost. Oh, the Pentecost? Yeah. It's another church, too. Maybe it's the Assembly of God. Yeah, the Assembly of God. So, sorry about that. All right, Assembly of God and Pentecostal. And again, I'm not trying to put them down, but that's man doctrine. Okay? That's human doctrine. All right? Jesus says, and we're going to see this, actually we're going to see it we didn't get to it, but I, if you want to open your Bibles back up, you'll look back down at uh, verse 15. Everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. Okay? There's a, in order to have eternal life in Him, you've got to have the Holy Spirit. All right? It just says, okay, hang on. It just says back over here that we just saw, Spirit gives birth to Spirit. All right? And, and this is very controversial to a lot of Assembly of God and Pentecostals. They says if you don't speak in tongues, blah 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 blah, because it does say that the the evidence of having the Holy Spirit, one of the evidence is speaking in tongues. That's not the only evidence. It's just not. Well, and in regards to speaking in tongues, and we do I have mean, some people in our church that will argue that point, and I love them. Okay, and I know. Okay, that, but, <laughs> okay let me let me finish because yeah. In the Bible, it's talking about speaking in tongues in two different references. One of them is a prayer language, uh -huh. and one of them for prophecy. Right. So your prayer language is not out here open with everyone. It's in your prayer closet. So That is strictly between the Holy God, Spirit and right. God. That's exactly that's right. That's right. So, you know, it talks about how the Holy Spirit will, will uh, translate your utterances and all, you know, when you don't have the words to say. So even though in my physical body... I don't know if I speak in tongues or not, or I, I think I don't. In my prayer language, I might be it because I might be praying in sure. tongues and not even realize it. Mm -hmm. And I, I've struggled with that right. because I would love to have that gift. I would too. And I pray for it. And I think that I probably have it, but I'm doing it in my prayer time, and I don't know I'm yeah. doing it because yeah. I think that we all do. Yeah. I pray for it, and I wish I had it. However, I, I will don't go care back to. If I do it out here for everybody else. Exactly. Say, you know. I go back to what Paul says, and this is really, and I'm not trying to, in you know, uh, impose. Not that's not the right word. I'm not trying to get anybody to think differently than the way they think. But this is what I think. Paul says, "I would rather speak a thousand words of prophecy than one word of tongues." We'll see that. Well, it's over. Amen. That's not what he says. He says, well, I'd rather speak a thousand words that somebody can understand right. well, rather than No, one he word says a prophecy. He, uh -huh. he, he says a prophecy uh -huh. that, that people can understand. A prophecy. Yeah. What is prophecy? Prophecy is speaking the word. This. Right. Teaching right. this. Right. That's what prophecy is. Okay? And he says, I would rather do that than speak however much of tongues or whatever. All right? Well, and, I know and right. that's the same way that I feel about myself. Right. I would love to have the gift of tongues. If I don't get it, that's fine. I would still rather teach right. the Word of God. Right. Okay? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm going to ask this. I don't know if it's true or not. But I've always heard that those that speak in tongues really don't even know what they're speaking, that they have an interpreter that someone else tells them what they're saying. Well, sometimes you can, you can interpret it and yourself. And so how do you know You're right. yeah. what they really say? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe that person just say what they want. If your prayer language is different, you know, it's something between you and God. Right. Exactly. And nobody else is supposed to know Exactly. 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 And that is your answer. It is. You are praying, just like Thomas said. <laughs> And you feel like these utterances are coming up, and that is 
I'm believing for you. That is your prayer language right there in your prayer closet. Don't well, you I believe it. it's something that I'm saying it's not the Lord by me. No, right, right. Right. Yeah. Oh, no because I've had the same experience. Well, I, I think it is a, 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 a gift from God also. Yeah, now, but I also believe that, and I check, you know, I, when I say this, remember me. I know speaking tongues. Okay? Mm -hmm. sure that is. sometimes I believe that we don't get the gifts that we want because we are too hard headed to lay down all of ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's to the yeah. Lord to accept what He did. Right. Yeah. See, we can't, we can't let go of us. Yeah, this right, this right here kind of, sums, kind of sums up all that. It says, all these are the work of one, the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. As He determines, not as we determine. In regards to the spiritual gifts. Right, the gifts, right. And about speaking in tongues. Somebody might be able to speak it, but another may be able to interpret. Okay, First, First Corinthians... 1 Corinthians 14, 19. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words of to instruct others than 10,000 words in the tongue. So I kind of had it backwards, but it's, it's the same thing. Okay? And, and basically what he's saying is there is that instead of having that particular gift, and Paul says he has the gift. He does speak in tongues. And there's nothing wrong with it. That's your communication between you and God. And, and it's great. I, I, you know. But if I speak to Ed, I want to speak to what Ed can understand. And I want Ed to speak me, to me where I can understand. All right? And then if he's speaking something that I don't understand and John can interpret it, and I really feel as though it's a true interpretation, that's fine with me. You know? Well, at one point, I, I told Jay, I said, I would love to be able to speak in tongues in my prayer time because Satan cannot understand that. Exactly. I just pour my heart out, you know, and just... It's, but it's see, God's right. still here. But see, the thing about it is, even when you're speaking in your own tongue, right. in your own tongue, and Satan does hear it, right. you're speaking that into the world because you're binding on earth and you're binding in heaven and releasing on, on, and everything. And so, who cares if Satan So does either way, Satan loses. Game over. Exactly. Let, let it, let it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had the rare occasion. Uh -huh. I was renting a room up in Montana, and the lady that owned the house was an elderly lady. Uh -huh. She had two daughters, 20, 21, 22, somewhere in that age. And plus, one time, it, this only happened twice when she thought I was gone, mm -hmm. and the reverend of their church came over. Right. And Buddy's scared out of me. Oh. <laughs> Alter Ed. Okay. <laughs> that was a tongue. Well, <laughs> I don't know what those are feeling. Right, right. Somebody interpret that word. Yeah. All right, Jay, do you have something real quick for yeah. us? What, what you're not realizing, and, and this is something that I prayed about and the Lord kind of let me know one night. When it talks in the Bible, at times it's talking about speaking in tongues and then the other times it's talking about languages <laughs> and what it's telling you is mm -hmm. when it talk when Paul tells you that he can speak in tongues it's not only talking about in, in his prayer language tongues he's talking about he knows languages. Hebrew he yeah, knows yeah, Greek language. he knows Ro uh, well, the Roman language read Acts 2 right. day of Pentecost yeah, read down the bottom and it says up. speaking in known tongues that's right. That's unknown to us, and that's the cloven language. Right. But whenever when they spoke that language, it went out, and everyone in that room understood it in the dialect of the county that they were born. Yes. Exactly right. right. Exactly. And, so so right. Interpreted. and see what what that's Barbara's class, isn't it? Yes, that's Barbara. A lot, people, <laughs> a lot of people get tied up into the that they do. And what it is, it's a language. Yeah. You it know. Is. Uh, We'll take Raul. He can speak English and he can speak Spanish. Sure. So he knows two tongues. Yeah. And yeah exactly. And, and and you know people get tied up into this. And the Lord laid it on me. He says he goes. These are languages. Mm -hmm. You know. And he says he goes. Now there is a spiritual language. There is. Yep. Yeah. And and because it says it in right it here in thirteen. It does. It says it says that. Um, about uh, you got tongues of the spirit, and you got tongues of of, of 
man. Man. The flesh. Right. And, right. and that's what I'm telling you. People get tied up and they don't, <coughs> as you say, they don't study and they don't look at it because sometimes it's talking about, it, like Paul talks, he goes from talking about tongues in the spiritual language, and then he goes to talk, talking about tongues in Right. In many languages, right. he knows. Right. Well, I'm talking about preacher, they talk about God ever speaking in tongues. Right. Well, that's what I'm talking about. And and that's where they get that's where they get mixed up, you know. Because if you really read it and you really I mean, study it, it, it he's at different means. times he's talking about different kinds. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's close. Uh, this was a good uh, it's discussion. It's gonna press out. Mm -hmm. I will. All right. Thanks, sister. Purpose. Yeah. Your Heavenly Father, we're so privileged to be able to come here tonight. Amen. We thank you for that. Yes, Lord. To learn more about you, to be closer to you, and to share it all with our brothers and sisters here tonight. Blessings on all of them, dear Lord. And be with us as we go our separate ways. Watch out for the homeless as they struggle just to get from day to day. And uh, I just love you so much, Lord, and thank you for everything you do for all of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, wrap your arms around those that we put on our list tonight, Lord. Okay. Comfort them. You, you know their needs. Give them all your love, your grace, your comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.